Herbert is being chased, thrown on the run, and it is caught. Touchdown, Keenan Allen. What a grab. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. That's the Warrior spirit right there, boy. Huge sack by Joey Bosa. 90 yard touchdown. 90 yard touchdown. It's going to be picked off at the 8 yard line by Derwin James. Herbert sets his feet, takes a shot downfield, has Knighton. Caught! Touchdown, Chargers! That's the greatest throw I've ever seen. What is going on, everybody? We interrupt normal broadcasting for an emergency podcast. Andy Prophet here, the host. It is Thunder Down Under Chargers podcast, and I am joined in the same room by none other than Alistair Lloyd, and the big man Jack Reed is back. Welcome, boys. Cheers to an absolute shit bit that was Thursday night football. Los Angeles Chargers 21, Las Vegas Raiders 63. Spoke last week on the show about a car crash. Well, <laughs> this is a little bit more than that when you give up 21 points in the first quarter, 42 points in the half to a team that was shut out the week before and allow the greatest score ever by the Raiders in franchise history. <laughs> Fuck the Raiders, because the Raiders fucked us. A lot has gone down overnight. Coach Brandon Staley has finally been shown the door and in a bit of a shock to me and maybe others, general manager Tom Telesco is also out of a job. Dean Spanos finally cracking the shits and Cleaning house. Three, uh, three games left in the season. What do you think, fellas? How do we start this one? <laughs> I'm just happy to be back. Yeah, I'm welcome back, I'm back in mate. Melbourne. This is the first ever show we've done in person. So hopefully for the listeners and for the viewers, it might be there might be some more uh, readily listenable repartee. Sometimes we do talk over one another, but I think that'll happen again today. True. <laughs> so, uh, but no, yeah, absolute shit fight. I watched the game uh, driving to Melbourne from Adelaide yesterday so i'm only bit parts but i've been following the staley telesco firing uh very closely this last couple of hours Ke kevin kev diego's asked that's what we're drinking today because he's a, a fan of all sorts of australian drinks in mclaren okay. why it's australian wines tassie one so tell her tell the listeners what we have bought a bit of nectar with you have you uh, it's, uh, for, well this is actually a winery that alistair and i went to on my birthday uh earlier this year so this is from bondar wines shout out hopefully they give us some free plonk <laughs> Chardonnay, I reckon it's one of the best value Chardonnays in McLaren Vale. Beautifully, nice and buttery, not too creamy. Uh, still lovely peach fruit there as well. Um, Kev, so used yeah. to be a sommelier, can you tell? Yeah. Uh, I'm a loser. Delicious drop. We will clearly be willing to talk about anything other than what happened last night uh, <laughs> in the game. Um, I guess, Al, if you want to run through a few stats, uh, just so we can... Hey. I, I'm, Analyze. You know my usual thing now. When I'm not used to Jack being here, I go no stats to start. That's right. You <laughs> no stats to start. More of a philosophical guy, are you? Yeah, because I, I see the uh, the parallels between what's happened yesterday, where you and I were so excited to watch this game. Andy's worked ridiculous hours all week, getting up at two a.m., finishing work at nine a.m., and we were excited yesterday to watch this game. We thought, you know, Eastern Stick versus Aiden O'Connell. We should be right in this. Let's see how this goes. Well, as you said, Raiders scored the most points they've ever scored in franchise history. 42-0 at halftime. And I have been listening to the Rest is History podcast quite a bit. And Jack, I know it's you've been podcast. a history teacher. Yeah, wonderful. What we've essentially had is a the fans demanding revolution. The players demanding revolution. And I'm thinking Louis the Sixteenth. The song could not. The song yes. could not. I'm, Robespierre. I'm thinking Charles I, the Stuart, Stuart dynasty. I'm thinking uh, Cromwell and the glorious revolution with the round heads. And a bit like some of those erstwhile monarchs, Brandon Staley is not an evil guy. Like he, like he, I think he's more Saint Nicholas, to be honest. Yes. Yeah. yeah Saint could, Nicholas. We could be talking about perhaps. Russian revolution. Yeah, we could be here. But yeah. You, you need, like, there was that uprising and, like, cacophony of mistakes and errors that demanded change. Yes. Now, history teaches us that when there's a revolution, the wake of that revolution is not always success. You can have the terror in the French Revolution. You might have 20 years of absolute irrelevance yep. and death and guillotine. That's right. <laughs> the, the key thing now is now that they've cut their head off the king, 
Brandon Staley's out of there. The fans got their blood. They put his head on a spike. So you're so you're calling Staley the king though, because is removing Staley and Tom Telesco going to actually change anything? Because yes. that's the question here. Or are we just scapegoating two people? Now I believe that it will change something, but uh, it does bring into question what the Spani want out of this as well. Are they going to get another puppet? Because that's who Tom Telesco has been for over a decade. That's right. And that's who Staley perhaps was more, he was more of a character that they believe they could mould and shape. He wasn't a Jim Harbour, he wasn't a Bill Belichick. So they've openly said that they want a person that can bring them a championship. And I believe that the Spani are completely terrified of irrelevancy mm. in an already saturated LA sport market. Mm. And Dean's sitting there going, I've just been on national TV, picking, his teeth. Like, picking his teeth looking like a moron. <laughs> doesn't have to do that. He doesn't have to try very hard to do that. Yeah. And uh, obviously the, the, the course of action, I think, is, um, yeah, listen, poor Brandon, poor Tom, they're both out of jobs, but that's why I get paid a million bucks and we'll see what happens in the wake. Is it? Well, that's, that's, that's another point. Yeah. It is just about a million bucks that Staley's getting paid or was getting paid. He'll get paid next year as well. He will. um, because historically, Spanos has been a bit of a tight ass. And the track record of, you know, uh, Tom Telesco's 11 year tenure has been hiring hotshot coordinators, hotshot coordinators in my bunny ears, um, bringing in, you know, McCoy, Lynn, now Staley. Maybe to, maybe Spanos, you're right, is terrified of this money play move to LA and not and he's opening up to allowing a would be head coach the opportunity to be somewhat involved in personnel decisions, which is a surprise to me. I thought, look, what is what is firing the coach and the GM going to do if the mentality is the same? I mean, words are, words are just words in the statement released by Spanos. Uh, after the firing, you know, the fans deserve better. We're willing. We want a new vision. They've earned better. They've yes, earned, they've better. earned better. better. i got to tell you. i got to tell you. We paid our price. That's <laughs> 65 episodes of it. <laughs> yeah. But who's counting? Like, subscribe, follow. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> ah, it's, um, there's, there's a, a plethora of opportunity now. Uh, for the direction the team goes. We, we don't want to harp too much on last night because Stick versus O'Connell, it kind of looked like, oh, geez, um, Tim Boyle versus prime Tom Brady, the way that... Uh, oh, So we should probably talk about the game at least a little bit. It's not the f feature or the focus, but it happened and it was damn embarrassing. Key key kind of thing was just how quickly it got away from the team, I thought. Just the defense starting poorly, giving up that initial touchdown. I was very worried getting heading into the game to know Nick Williams and Atito Abonio were out because I thought they're the two who've stopped the run. So on that first drive, when we saw the Raiders march down and score, and then it became Eastern Stick kind of a fumble, uh, another turnover soon after. It just got completely away from the team. Five turnovers. Of which, of which the, the Raiders scored five touchdowns from yep. those turnovers. Yep. It was everything. It was the perfect storm. Everything that could go wrong went wrong for the Chargers, and everything went absolutely perfectly for the for the Raiders. And why does that happen? Do you think, like, I mean, we should really appreciate Herbert because yeah. maybe without Correct. Herbert, yeah. these kind of results would have happened more often throughout the year when the defense is giving up points. If you've got a backup quarterback on your end and you're turning it over on offense, you're going to lose by multiple scores, which we had not really seen before today. But how do you, how do you explain, Jack, like the effort the team played with? Some will say... The team quit on the coach. What what's your take? Did the did the team visibly protest and quit on Brandon Staley yesterday? I think when there is uh, there's upset things going on behind the scenes, 
And I truly believe that whether it's Staley, whether it's Telesco, the Spanos, there is stuff in that culture that is toxic and has been for quite a while. There's internal battles, internal fighting. I go for a much maligned club called the Essendon Bombers, Andy. They're not as bad as perhaps St Kilda, but, um, you know, but I've witnessed the internal strife of individuals who are not part of the playing group, generally don't have anything to do with what happens on game day. But if you know that there are big power players in an organisation fighting, you're wondering the future of your job, you're questioning your performance, you're going, holy, holy hell, I'm not going to make a mistake, what am I going to do? So what you do see is you people, or people tend to go inward and they go individual. And I think what we saw last night was people, uh, players especially, really going and worrying about themselves rather than the team. And as you said, I think credit where credit's due because Justin Herbert, I didn't think, it was up until this point, I didn't think Justin Herbert was a particularly good leader. And everyone had said how he's developed a lot as a leader. He's an introvert himself, but clearly not having Keenan Allen there too, clearly there was, there was leadership issues. And Khalil Mack, as much as he's had an incredible season, mm. um, he again is that leader by doing. Derwin James didn't seem like he had a particularly influential game. He's been struggling this year anyway. Terrible. He did not. No. It feels like there's just disharmony, disconnection, and we've talked about lack of coherency. Not only last night was it lack of coherency, but like it was consistent. Yeah, it was I consistent. Thought it was shit. Yeah, I thought it was there. Like if it was I the most that, consistent I've played all year. I said to yeah. you, I was like, "Is this the definition of? Is it complementary football when the offense and the defense and special, <laughs> and special teams, teams fucking suck? Fuck, it's like, like yeah. oh man, just the nature of the nature of the failures, like the the shocking ball protection. Uh, poor Darius Davis. He was he was looking at a a rookie pro bowl uh, nod for, you know, he's leading the lead, leading the league in uh, return yards uh, tied for return touchdowns r returns over 20 yards and then turns away from, or turns back towards the Raiders goal line, gets smacked. Blue shades of Travis Benjamin. Oh, mate, there it were was. shades of Travis Benjamin. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah, that's safety. Fucking hell. And Austin Eckler had the least carries, the least snaps yeah. he's had in any game as a Charger, at least in the last five years. He had 26 snaps. Right. So they really rode Spiller with the 16 carries for 50 yards. But I mean, I, I don't think the players quit, but the mm. environment and culture meant that the players had no other option to do what they did. I think that like, a bit like the term momentum, it's important to define what quit means. Mm. Yeah. Otherwise you can't measure it. Like what, what, what is quit? If it means, did the players deliberately go out there wanting to lose. No, I don't no, believe any no, no, professional no. sportsman really does that. I feel like maybe you're just a bad team. Maybe you are poorly coached. Mm. You can't get over the injuries. You can't get over the lack of vocal leadership, like you said, and it manifests in an absolute beatdown. And from us, from the outside, you say, well, they quit on the coach. It doesn't matter really whatever terminology you use. It means that they are so bad right now that change and significant change needs to happen. Yeah. And I... Do I agree that that's the case? I accept that that is one way of dealing with it. And I, I'll tell you why very quickly. I figure like, don't worry about the sunk cost the last three years, which have happened. Yeah. If you're starting year four next year with your new GM, is Brandon Staley coming back from this year and the lessons learned and with as a 41 year old, another chance to get grow and improve I want, I want us to find a better coach than that. I think like in the right organizational environment, Staley could still be a good head coach. Maybe it means he would have to relinquish play calling duties, but I feel like in like there, there was an alternate universe out there where Staley is a good NFL head coach. It's not going to be with the Chargers now and it's deserved. Yep. He let himself down in a lot of ways this year. The defense has been bad the whole tenure. Uh, he had, didn't comport himself well in press conferences. But we're talking not. We're talking historically poor performances. Yeah. Historically poor performances. The yesterday one by and Jacksonville. Just in general. Yeah. Like there is every single week there seems to be numbers that oh this hasn't been as bad since 1965. Mm -hmm. Oh, a team hasn't been this and this the and it's historically ones. bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when and when you think of a head coach as you bring what do I bring as a value add? I'm a defensive coordinator. I can't even do that. Yep. Whether or not it's because you're trying to split your time between being a head coach and a defensive coordinator, 
he's he lost me and i said this earlier today in the chat he lost me when he lost that because i thought he was a reflective reflexive guy he was like oh mm. we've talked about this we've done this but that stubbornness to not relinquish play calling when i believe he should have and who knows what the internal structures are um that, that he set up but it's not just bad it's historically bad yeah and i think that's important to note yep agree I think there's just stubborn elements to him as well, which really feeds on how you have kind of stepped back and taken a wider look at, at how he is. There's, you know, change needs to be made when you're giving up historic yards on defense and points, those sort of things. And you're not changing the personnel, you know, last night, even in the game, we're looking at the linebackers just fucking Henley played three snaps. Copping it. Yeah, get the guy in the get in the damn game. He's an athletic linebacker. You have there's nowhere up to go from here. Yeah. Like mathematically, I guess we could end up what nine and seven if we'd won the last four games. Yes. But man, you're getting thrashed by the worst team of the four that we are playing to finish this season. Yeah. And you're not even getting him in the game. Um, Let me ask you a hypothetical. Do you think Staley's failure is kind of organizational or is it Staley himself? So for example, if Staley was plopped into Philadelphia instead of Nick Sirianni and Sirianni was the coach of the Chargers, would Staley have that Eagles team humming with their ownership with Jeff Lurie and Howie Roseman as GM? Yeah, do you, uh, it's impossible to know. What do you think though? Uh, well, this is sort of your last little bit about in a different world, Staley could be a decent head coach. And I feel like that is a, a possibility. Um, do I think he's had his wings completely clipped in his position over the last three years? Maybe. Maybe they pulled him back a bit with the aggressive fourth down calls from year one, and maybe it's just sort of got into his head. But back to my point about him being stubborn, it's bad. The drafting's bad, man. Is that him or is that well, there was, there's John been, Spanos? There's been so much. drafting so bad. In fact, today... On PFF NFL podcast, Brett Spielberg has said, of the last six years, there is one charger drafted outside pick 100 who made it to his second contract. It is Eastern Stick. Yeah. So if rounds four to seven, not a single one is hitting. Yeah. And I don't even really think that many of the first round picks are. Look, Rashawn Slater, good. The jury's still out on Quinton Johnston, but and Zion Johnson to a degree as well. But there's just been... You know, trading things like trading up for Kenny Murray, stuff like that is just that's poor GM stuff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, there has also been a bit of confusion about who the guys want. You know, we talk about Zay Flowers was Staley's guy, mm -hmm. and uh, Chris Beattie, you know, brought in um, Jordan Addison in college, and um, Kellen Moore and Telesco wanted Johnston. There's just there's disharmony there in the actual building of the team. Perhaps there's. And look, we've spoken a little, there's been so much talk about how the Spanos and John, Dean and John Spanos have needed a puppet and a buffer between a walkover head coach who will just do what he'll do with what he's given and Telesco does what he's told. And that's kind of how yeah. the, everything kind of settles there. My issue is a, yes, the, the drafting has been bad. The, Ignorance, I think, for use of a better word, of I believe we have the right guys here and the right depth. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, when you're missing the starters that we're missing, the depth ain't fucking good enough. Yeah. Because it is just, it is like J-League stuff. But they, it, I, I mean, I see your, an answer to your question. It's a, it's a perfect storm, and, and we're at a crossroads in the league in general. But if you think about what Brandon Staley represents and what Tom Telesco represents, Tom Telesco was hired as the young guy. He had been sitting in Indianapolis for a number of years. He had success at the Colts or seen success. He came in and he was a he was an expert scout. He was a gun scout. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with being a, a GM who's a good scout. But now if you look at the GMs who build successful teams, scouting is not really as relevant as it used to be. And I think you, you've got GMs like Roseman. You've got, um, who's the Chiefs GM? Les Snead. Les Snead. The, oh, sorry, sorry. Chiefs. Sorry, um, Chiefs. Uh, explained. Yeah, Sneed is up there. But they're trying to find edges in other ways. It's not just about getting talent in the building. It's not just about getting your six foot three, two hundred and twenty pound wide receiver because that's you Julio Jones was that ten years ago. So I think in some ways the league is almost past Telesco by due to the advancements not only in metrics now, but also how you build teams. 
Combine that with hiring a coach who is part of the Fangio system. And we know now that the Fangio system is, is almost out of date because the Shanahan tree is putting up 30, 40, 50, 60 points. And when you look at McDaniel, you look at Shanahan, you look at McVay, it is now an offensive league. And the rules are all going towards quarterbacks to pass the ball more. So there's going to be more passing yards. Offenses are harder to stop. Yeah. So it almost feels like the Spanoses were trying to be new and different and hiring these young people and like, oh, we're going to be different. And it's completely, completely... The thing that's cheap, annoying, though, is... Cheap and domineering. Is, is, how is total it. offense is down across the league this year. So defenses are winning this year. Some even of the Fangio variety. It's just it's like we picked the coach who hasn't actually executed that scheme well. And how depressing in the year where the Chiefs are 8-5 and five and are there saying, pick us off, yeah. pick us off. It was the year we couldn't take that next step. I guess the difference between Fangio and Staley is that Fangio has decades of experience and Staley has what? Less than five? Or five? It's a hot minute. Yeah. Here's a self-reflective question. Because, and I'll, I'll go last. The, you've got to, like all of us at different times have been, well, even bullish about Staley being the right hire. And I still think he possesses some of the archetypes that you would look for in a head coach in the sense of general intelligence. I'm thinking Bill Walsh. Yeah. Student of the game, really knows X's and O's and all of the different history of the league. Like back in 2016, this team ran that play. I see that as a Belichickian mm. kind of trait. But he maybe misses some of the like Vrabel, Tomlin, toughness. I used to play in the league. Those kind of traits. What have you learned, Jack, about this? The fact that we all were pro Staley mm. and it hasn't worked. Have we have we learned anything about the next hire? What not to fall for? Ooh, I mean, there's so many things you've got to consider. And I think what I will not do again is trust what I hear in press conferences. Mm. I won't trust a good orator. Uh, the way that he spoke about leadership, though, I do buy into. I do believe in player empowerment. And it's as millennials move into being professionals in the league, I think that has its place. But perhaps he didn't have the credence of an ex-player to really get them going. And it seemed to me that he tried to get play, uh, tried to get coordinators in uh, Lombardi, but um, defensively that could fill, fill that void a little bit, fill the, the fact that he hadn't played. Yep. But... Ultimately, it seems to me a head coach has to have some sort of strong personality. And Staley had a strong personality, but it was really it was really positively nice. But maybe you just have to be an asshole. You yeah. have to be an asshole. Yeah. And Staley kind of got there, but it was far too late. And he tried to kill you with kindness. But the one thing I have learned is no matter who we hire, whether it be Harbour or one of these coaches that everyone's, I will not trust this organisation until I see at least 24 months of development yeah. and growth. Yeah. I um, I look and have to apologise to myself for being, I guess, naive to a degree because I, I like the two of you, fell for that um, presence of a, a man who spoke well and that you thought this, could be, this guy oh, could be a, a great leader and you, you bought it. You know, we drank the Kool-Aid. You look at, like you've said, a guy with experience, bit more of a kind of blue collar attitude of like, I'm not going to tolerate shit. And yeah. that is, that's Vrabel, that's Belichick, that's Dan Campbell. Yeah. Dan Campbell is like, we're going to bite your care. kneecaps off. We yeah. laughed at that guy. Yeah, the the, the yeah. NFL world laughed at this guy coming out saying, we're going to get up and we're going to take a chunk out of your leg. Look at what he's doing at Detroit with Jared Goff. We've got a better quarterback. Sure, he's got uh, Ben Johnson, but there's an element of, I just feel like Staley was far too much of a pushover. And you're just kind of getting egos. And the thing that absolutely killed me last night, there was a, a good pass breakup by Asante Samuel Jr. But given the position of the game to get up and start celebrating, fucking hell, man. Oh, Eckler signaling the, signal the first down when it's 56 to 7. Like, that just holy. shows individuality. That's individuality. I'm looking after, I'm playing my game and I've got to stop. So I'm going to, I've done It's my not job. a bit like trying to G up your teammates, though. The only, the only guy... 50 to 7, I don't think that's happening the, somehow. Almost the only guy on... Like, look, Keenan's had a fantastic year. The only guy that I'm seeing play with a bit of, like, dog, week in, week out, is Gerald Everett. And he yeah. was doing it last night, and the team was not in a good way. He got that... Um, 
There was the taunting penalty on Amick Robertson mm-hmm. for, you know, tackling, forcing the incompletion. Gerald Everett is standing up and he's going, get on my back. Like, come on, guys, at least, like, show a bit of fight. So, look, I don't think that the team completely just packed it in. There are guys who actually care, who have pride. Hmm. Maybe Staley, as the coach, has too much pride, not willing to sort of change, um, not willing to listen to the outside noise. When someone says, maybe you should just relinquish the play calling duties. Maybe you should focus on the team being one rather than three bits. Get them together. Let your protege look after the play calling stuff. But as a, as a, as a play caller, you can't do that. Because yeah, exactly. You've got too much to worry about. Got, you're trying to, yeah, it doesn't. And you don't have the experience of looking after a 53 guys rather than your linebackers or your yeah. defense. Yeah. There are look, and that comes back to our naivety of mm-hmm. not sort of understanding what the the true traits are. You need leaders of men who then can delegate what they need out of their coaches, which is exactly that. Yeah. What's the point in having a DC? He's like a nanny. If you're just going to do his job for him, you're not. You're then uh, neglecting the rest of the team, and it shows. And that's how it is. Mm. It's really disappointing. Yeah, I um, agree with both of those points. They're two two learnings. The other one that I think is kind of tied to the two, um, it's experience. I I overlooked Staley's lack of experience in the NFL. Yep. At the time, I hadn't thought about that that much. He'd had two years in Chicago, two years in Denver one year in LA yeah, and in LA was the only time as a coordinator mm. and they're the number one defense before that he was div three college. And I, I overlooked that because of how confidently he presented and cause he is smart. And I thought this guy gets it. And there was precedent for other young coaches having success in the league, but those young coaches like Matt LaFleur, like McVeigh, like Mike McDaniel all had really long, tenures as assistants at multiple organizations. Most of them them had been in the NFL for 10 years. So I that was a blind spot for me. I didn't even think four years might not be enough before being a head coach. And I think I should have. Mm. Oh, well, it's not our fault. We didn't hire the guy. We just thought, hey, look, let's 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 learn and let's appreciate as many aspects of this guy because he signed a four year contract as the coach of the team that we support and love and pour all this time and effort into to to talk about um i, I guess maybe what well, i thought he might have been a mcdaniel or a shanahan or a lafleur i thought he might have been one of those types because he is kind of from that tree but not but you're right alistair they're just the experience was just not was just not there um it, it is it is very uh, i don't think we should overlook and i'm harsh in chats that we have but it's, we shouldn't overlook that Brandon Staley, this is a huge uplift for him now in a, not, a, not an uplifting way, but he's got to move his family. He's got to find a job, whether he gets another. I mean, this guy might never be a head coach again. He's had a shot and that's it. And that's quite sad. Um, and I don't think he deliberately, you don't deliberately go into a job trying to mess a team up. But um, yeah, really unfortunate in terms of the management side. And maybe he, he this is what he has to learn. Remember, all those guys we talk about have been in organizations and seen the head coach fight yeah. and seen and seen disharmony and seen that. So when you walk into that job, you know what snakes to look for in the grass. McVeigh came out really strongly today. Brandon Staley is a great coach. I yeah. know him, da, 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 da. The question is, does he fall on his feet with one of his many friends across the league, yeah. Kevin O'Connell, Mike McDaniel? Does he get a DC job? Does he have to go back to being a position coach, yeah. Uh, yeah. outside linebackers coach? Just... In well, case you thought there weren't enough stats. Look at some of those environments, though. Like Kevin O'Connell, yes. Brian Flores, who's done a pretty good job with the Minnesota defense this year. Done some fun stuff. Blitzing everywhere. Um, excellent job. Excellent job. With not a lot of cattle. Either. Shocking cattle. Yeah. Probably not going to get a gig there. Like, you know, he's had Josh Metellus, who's played just about every position on that team. Gets another head coaching you're, gig. You're right. Actually, he had one. It's okay. So Brandon Staley gets fired. Did a bit of research. There are 55 NFL coaches, history of the league, who've been fired during year three. Yep. Saley's win-loss record is fifth out of that list because he ends with 24 wins, 24 losses in the regular season, 50% win, which is pretty good. But he also had Herbert and a good roster and some really bad losses. Brian Flores had one less win as head coach of the Dolphins. The yep. Dolphins, yes. Maybe, maybe Flores gets another gig in this cycle. Maybe Staley finds himself in Minnesota. 
who knows, but it's a long pathway back. And I think we're going to need to change some cover photos on Twitter. <laughs> Might even need to change our intro. <laughs> We changed, yes. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Um, That's good. So who, who are some building blocks? Uh, so now now that you're in the get games into uh, young players, who who are some guys where you think, no brainer, offense, Jack, that, okay, this guy is sticking around? Well, no, I'm going to have to defend myself because Andy said I packed up my brain with the, the house. I'm uh, reeling in, that in, back in. In saying of I gave a list of about 15 or 16 players that we should get rid of. Uh, but you, you did say sorry. Um, I truly believe that with a culture the way it is, is that you've got Telesco's fingers all through players. You've got Staley's fingers all, all over. That sounds a bit weird. Um, all over these these guys. Some of these guys have seen two coaches now. Mm. They've they've ridden these two big waves. Like, yeah, we're going to be good. I truly think it is a, is a complete rebuild. So if I'm thinking, ten, I'm going team, not just, I think, Justin Herbert, Rachel Slater, and Tooley. Those are the only three that I that I'd go bang bang bang. You are getting contracts. Welcome, Asante. No, nah. he's got. I think next year will be the final year of his rookie deal. No, nah. no, nah, not Asante. What about Derwin James? Nope. No, so Derwin James is twenty seven. Yep, we just extended him. Yep, we can't get rid of him next year. Yep, unless you traded him. Yep, uh, and he's out of contract at the end of twenty twenty six. So we got him twenty twenty four, twenty twenty five, twenty twenty six. Yep, he's twenty seven. Yep. Are you keeping him around or are you looking to move him this offseason? Looking to move him, I Why? think. Well, the type of leader that he is, he's very emotional. And you can see that the way he's played this year, given the penalties, I do worry about his body, given the even the relatively large surgery he had to have coming out of college. And I think he's, he's yep. valuable. And if I was him, the way that I play as a leader, I'm going to be on my third defence. Brandon Staley's moved me all over the field and I've had one of the worst seasons I've had. The worst season. I the worst say. season. For sure. Uh, and when, when, when is the DC being hyped? Because what do I do in my off season? Um, this is why the next high is so important because you've got to get all these. It's not a coaching job as such. It's actually a mentoring job to get these guys back on side. And Derwin being Derwin, I think I would get rid of him. It just concerns. Maybe me. it depends on who the DC is first, I guess, to see. Like, you, you let, because you don't need to do it imminently. No, you no, can see that would the be head coach and see what kind of defensive scheme it is. Hmm. Make a decision after the draft. Yeah, it's it's just a real concern for the down year that he's had, and just not being able to. The emotional point is spot yeah. on, Jack. He's playing. Just he feels so strongly to overplay. He's just like he's. I think he's he's want is there um he wants to do the right thing but i just don't know if he knows how to anymore he's also a captain yeah and, he, and that means so this kind of falls on leaders yeah the, the failure of lynn well when you play failure, like when you're playing the way you are on the field on, yeah you need people like khalil mack to say hey guys this is not good enough yeah and you're not getting that you're not getting that out of doing yeah there were times where i saw mack come off the field and he was borderline like laughing he was like this is criminal here how we're playing here like you know, he came out into the in the media. I spoke about it last week on the show, and it concerned me. I reckon he'll, you know, even though he's under contract, we spoke about it yesterday yeah. on that very couch there, uh, watching the game. And I just don't think he wants an ad, wants anything to do with it. Yeah. I don't think he'll. Um, I think he'll request a trade, and then that is just another element of internal breakdown mm. uh, and disharmony, which is um, fine. I I don't have an issue with that because it's like. I, I want to win and I've get, been getting paid money, but I, I would like to go somewhere, have the best chance to win. It's not going to be at the Chargers next year. I, I just don't think so. No, no, no. The, the head coach that comes in literally should not plan the defense, should not touch special teams, should not touch the offense, get coordinators in to do all that stuff. Your job is going to have to be, if you're deciding to keep some of these players, is to people manage. That's yeah. what you have to do. X's and O's, you have to have some comprehension. Don't get me wrong. You've got to feel, you've got to feel the game. And you've got to people manage because yeah. if you can't, those are the only three players that are not burnt enough by the charges that would almost be um, okay. I can I can easily see you playing with Derwin. I have to go. Okay, dude. The last five years, Greek, talk to me about it. How how are you actually feeling? And he might just go, "F this." Well, when you say that, like the players that you're talking about not being burnt, Herbert, uh, Slater, and Tooley, 
Herbert has been fucking burnt by this team. Yeah? He has been paid. To a degree. Yeah, 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 but he's there because he has to be. Yeah. And look, he's making a, he's making a good crust, but you're telling me that the, his, his start, the start to his career has been an absolute washing machine. I'd say he's there because he wants to be. Yeah, he for didn't sure. need to sign that mega deal. For sure, but I don't think he saw this happening. Oh, when he no. came into this season, right. he did not see us going how, five and nine. And no. But I mean, how I'd sell it though is, and also the reason why I'd get rid of a lot of these players is because they are captains. I said it before, I do believe this is time, this is time for Justin Herbert to take over this team. Hmm. And it's take over this team not only as one of the best young quarterbacks in the league, but as a leader. And it's hard. Does he have it in him to do that? I, I, I believe. I, I, I do. Well, look at look at what happened without him. Yeah, yeah. Look at what happened without him. Yep. And so whether that is lead, he's not a vocal leader, but players believe as long as we've got Justin Herbert in the game, we're a chance. And clearly, when Justin Herbert's not in the game, it's fucked. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, and I think it's hard having players like Bosa, Mac, Derwin James, SJD. These are all big personality guys really loud and Herbert is like, okay. So I think what you do is you build your team, you structure your philosophy around leadership around what your quarterback brings because he's the most important player. Yeah. And those other players lead in, they're not, naturally they will be, there's a hierarchy because I, I'm older than you. Keenan, so, well, what about Keenan? I, oh, you can extend him and make him retire as a charge. You, well, he's already on contract for a little bit longer. I, do you just keep him? I, for, for good yeah. times. So, and God, and he's had, he's had oh, an incredible season. Absolutely got to keep him. Yeah, have that's to keep just him. One that's, of, the other. that's got to be one of the, the shining lights on this, not just this season, but this kind of period of yeah. the Chargers history. So fun to watch is, guy. This guy just needs to retire as a Charger. Yeah, that's just... you. You just kind of have to do that for the morale of the entire organization, the fans. Everyone loves him. Yep. He's playing like he's having a career year at 31, 32. Crazy. And Tao will like this one. Brian, we know you're a big Keenan fan. He's been enormous. One player we haven't mentioned, and people ridiculed me when I was saying this, and we all kind of agreed, Joey Bosa. The moment that Jacksonville fiasco happened, I know this year was meant to be all in, but you, there's always this tension between building for the future and trying to win now. And with Mac around and the ability to draft a rusher, which we did with Tooley, I thought trade Bowser last year. At that stage, you were going to get a first round pick plus. Yeah. As it turned out, we doubled down on our strategy. We thought we'll have Bowser and Mac and Tooley. And lo and behold, he's barely played a game because he's made a glass. And now you're going to get cents on the dollar for him. Yep. That was a mistake. Yep. But when they opinion. were all together, I right. see the value in Tooley's development from him and Mac being the guys. Like the relationship that has sure. allowed Tooley to grow. Sure. And I feel like Tooley's fallen off a little bit as the season's he's worn tired. on. He's a tired. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's understandable because the workload has been absolutely yeah. dumped on him. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, what I want to touch on, just been there. yeah, what I yeah, exactly. What I want to we haven't brought up because Jay Rogers has been borderline scapegoated as well. Yeah. Staley's mate, that's Staley's cool. mate, and it is it has been Staley's line. You know, SJD Austin Johnson have been the guys that they were Staley's guys to get that oh, that right. run defense, that interior of the line, and Jay Rogers is now on a, a kick to the curb because you know they're Staley's guys and. So let's go got him in and it's all just sort of been a bit of a, a dumpster fire. Um, now look, you know, you can't really defend him, the poor guy, but that sort of is what it is. Uh, it just sort of speaks volumes about the, what Staley had in LA with Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, etc. Sure. He got great things with Leonard Floyd and uh, Troy Hill, John Johnson, stuff like that. But it's you just, you've also got a generational interior defensive line. Oh, absolutely. And it's also a real organisation, though. That's true. Les, Out, Les Snead, the guy you said before, is the GM of that organisation. Which is, wouldn't Puka Nakua be nice this year, mm. finding him in the sixth round or whatever it was. Uh, um, Alistair? Yes. Kellen Moore. Does oh. he stay? Next year? Yeah. So so like, so like the head coach comes in and goes, you know what, Kellen, you've got a relationship with Keenan. Mm. Uh, sorry, with Keenan. With Keenan and Herbert. Yeah. Um, stay. Mm -hmm. I think that could happen if they decide that they want to hire Dan Quinn to be the head coach of the Chargers. Yeah. If they decide we want someone who's been a head coach before and Dan Quinn got Atlanta to a Super Bowl and he's kind of reformulated himself in Dallas. He's not doing the Seattle stuff anymore and that, that Dallas defense is killing it. <laughs> so like that could be one where you go Dan Quinn and Kellen Moore have worked together before. We like we don't want Herbert learning a new offense. Provided Moore does not get a head coaching gig elsewhere, which is possible because he, he wants the Carolina job, is the rumor. Yeah. 
I could see him staying with the Dan Quinn. If it's not Dan Quinn, if it's Harbour, I wouldn't be surprised if we just see brand new coordinators. Although, what about Ficken, Fiken, Fucken? <laughs> do you, he, do you he, keep him? Sounds no, like a no. hobbit. Yeah, definitely. No, I, I think I absolutely. I keep. I, sure. They've been one of the. They've been, if not one of the best, but the best special teams unit in the league. Unfortunately, last night it started poorly and it just went downhill with the Jasir Taylor roughing the fair catch. But that yeah. hasn't happened in. That hasn't happened in two years. And that's you're right. The, you're the, right. The first time, and you go. You got to have one game where one phase actually plays poor. It, it happens. Yeah, uh, that he was, was just down with the tank. He knows. He knows what's up. Yeah, you get that high draft pick, Brock Bowers, Maserati Marv. Yeah, yeah. Ficken's a smart man. Yeah, exactly. You reckon? You reckon? Just see Taylor suited up yesterday and thought, "Oh, are you going to continue to play a Saint Bassy at slot corner? Cool. All right, uh, watch this. I'm going to. Yeah. I'm going to. I'm going to Goldberg Gore the kick uh, returner and give away 15 penalties straight off the bat. A 15 yard penalty straight off the bat. That was one of the dumbest things I. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I had just. Flew across the room watching that. I said, "Our oh, mate, yeah, look, this is going to fall on deaf ears for our American listeners, but Australia is playing test cricket at the moment and we're doing all right. Yeah. I was like, mate, can we flip the channel? Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't watch this shit anymore. If that's how it's going to start, and then it was just... Like, Eastern Stick gets hit, drops the ball. Yeah. Mate, his arms didn't even get touched. No. Josh, so, Ke- Josh Kelly, give him an opportunity. Let's get that running oh, back. That was some bad back. time to fumble too. That I, was the, I, that was I went pretty game. hard. That's also his career. I went. I, yeah, I agree with you. I went pretty hard at Josh Kelly, and you said last. You said last night. You're like, man, that was almost unnecessary. Well, I feel like his performance yesterday really kind of backed me up because I thought, get him off the field, get this guy out of here. I, I can't deal with this anymore. I'm glad that I'm glad that Spiller. Uh, got some carries. It wasn't great, but geez, at and least he runs he, hard. He's, he's going to stay. Hard. He's going to stay because Eckler's going to go and Kelly's yeah. going to go. He's going to be, yeah. and he's got two years one. left on his deal. Yeah. So at least, like like you said, maybe he can be good running RB two short yard. I think that's yeah. his ceiling. Like third sure. and one, we need a yard. Yeah, you bang. never know. Yeah. You never know. Yeah, could develop. You got um, to ask something. I was. I'm just sort of. I, I did mention this last night on the phone when we chatted. This whole philosophy of team building, and you know the. What it reeks to me, I mean, the organisation since Dean has taken over has been individual, ego-driven, and has been sort of, it's been, a, you know, my family works here, my boys work here, this is what, blah, blah, blah. Is that going to change if a new head coach and general manager come in? Because, yes, because the argument would be is that they're throwing money, they're throwing more money around than I can ever remember. Herbert, Bosa, Mac. But Keenan, again, Mike, Williams, Mike, Mike, Derwin, Mike's Keenan, Derwin, Lindsley. But yep. again, is but again, is is that being led by Telesco because t- they're Telesco's guys and they're Staley's guys? Guys. Or is there a more is there an undercurrent of individualism that goes, you know what? What a good team has this has these heroes, and but we we know that when those heroes are injured, we have no depth. Whereas you kind of look at another philosophy of team building and rather than actually looking at individual players on lines or in positional groups, you decide to focus on that unit. You decide to focus on your defensive line, your offensive line, or your your cornerbacks. Not just trying to pinpoint kind of like the best of the best of each and go, oh, okay, yeah, we've got some great players in each uh, team, but ultimately they're just individuals. Hmm. They're not good, they're not good team players. So I, I don't know. I, I, was, I just wanted to spitball that a little yeah. bit. And do we get a head coach that is the individual? That is, I am. I am the organization now, not the Spanos. I'm the GM, and I'm going to make the calls. Oh, well, it's the interest. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, we're we hearing did. he's interested. Yeah. 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 Well, he, yeah. Loves, he loves Justin Herbert. And he loves we, the charges. I don't know. I don't know necessarily if we want to open up this can of worms today just, because yeah. we've got three weeks of. Ahead of us of and an off season of pretty grim. You want to do a Bills preview, do you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not at all. <laughs> Sixty to seven, Charlie Blue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thousand, <laughs> hundred points. Yeah. Let's break some records, NFL. Um, well, what Dean was saying about the well, what he said about the the new vision is just that it's opening up to having the head coach be you know, involved in the personnel. Uh, now we've got Giff Smith as, you know, the interim head coach, yep, outside Smith. linebackers, yep. outside linebacker coach. Been and this is 2013. Yeah, head of, McCoy, so head of, a lot, um, of, a lot of institutional knowledge. And head of player personnel, Jojo Wooden, as the interim GM. Uh, it'd be interesting to see. I don't know if they're, if this is a test. I was, 
I don't know. When I was sort of surprised, I'd always thought that if there was to be a firing of the coach in the se- in throughout the season, that the head coach role might go to the one guy that I think we can all agree on that is the, the coordinator that has stood up, Ryan Ficken. I thought that might have been the guy that seems to be a little bit more hard-lined, like we've spoken about, where you need a bit of authority and you need to say, rather than, hey, bad luck, good job, you know, we made some good plays and yada, yada. Like, I feel like Ficken's the guy who's like, this shit ain't good enough. Isn't that you the need Spanos to be better? Though? Well, yeah. So in the circle, in a sanctum, been here ten been years. There, yeah. Yeah. Jojo Wooden been with the personnel staff ten years. You know, yeah. Yeah. very comfortable. So saying one thing to the masses, the actions exactly are saying what more of the same. Still what a word! Dream, incestuous ego, individual. Like you know, we you know, it's 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 my team, not anyone else's. Yep. Which mm. worries me. And they can do all the lip service. We're going to take a different approach to organisational building. But are you? Until it happens, you're right. 24 months is just about what is uh, needed. Well, and hey, the NFL has just, just uh, said that the 2027 Super Bowl will be a third fight. That's got to be the goal. All That's right, the... guys. Is there a chance that the Chargers can turn this around? Oh, yeah. By then. I think like it's the, With the, the, the cap, finances. The cap issue is a bit not overblown. It's a problem. But you can churn that within a few years. With the right hire and you've got Herbert. Yep, yep. You can fix that with by 2027 at yep. least. You'd, you'd like to think so, wouldn't you? Mm. I don't know what you'll get from it, but look, Chargers fans rejoice. It looks like we will end up drafting in the top five. Um, wow. Well, beggars can't be choosers, but let's hope. Let's yeah. hope. Hey, well, Brock Bowers would be nice. Yeah, it would. But also, um, actually, you and I got into a little bit of a, a stoush with a, uh, <laughs> a listener and a Chargers fan on Twitter talking about, and I. I must apologize if you if you've decided to listen to us this week as well uh talking about the value of pick 5 to pick 10 and what that's worth there are a lot of teams that need a quarterback and a lot of teams that need a left tackle and the way that this draft class is shaping up is there's going to be a, a a plenty for uh those so picking at 5 and we're going to be picking at the top of each round yeah. um you can end up with uh um, you know, teams trading up to get one of those valued positions, Joe Walt, uh, Fashanu, um, Drake May, Caleb Williams, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can trade back. The, you can trade no. back. It's a and, well, look, and my argument was, that's all well and good. The the guy, sorry, I, I, you know, Chargers fan, um, you'll know who you are when you listen. No, we'll, you, trade, we'll trade up for a linebacker. But my, my, thing, my, my argument was, it's all well and good to say that this pick's worth this, but when have you ever seen Tulesco trade back? Well, he's gone. So my argument is completely out of my defense is completely out of the window of this want to lose. I don't want us to lose. I don't think the team are going out there to lose. I just don't think that the team is now capable of winning. But it's a it's a stick being injured is perfect. It is perfect. Herbert being injured. Yeah. Herbert, sorry, I should say. Herbert being injured is perfect. Maybe we've seen Max Duggan. Get Duggan in the game. Throw Duggan in the game. Why not why not treat why not treat the next three weeks as preseason games? Play the guys a half each. See what you've get got. Get the bullfrog. See what it. you've got. Yeah. See what you've got. Get Diane Henley in the game instead of Kenny Murray. Um, who knows if Kendricks will be there next yeah, year. Get Fadden in there on the line. Yeah, get yeah. Fadden. Hymers. High, well, Will Claps injured. Kind of blessing in disguise. Get Hymers in there. Get these guys some reps, some valuable reps. Um, Spiller was a perfect example yep. yesterday. I'm kind of at a loss to see who else there is that might sort of float in and out. You know, Dean Leonard being like playing already. Yeah. Getting the injuries. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, golly Davis looked absolutely junk yesterday, didn't he? Mm-hmm. That's just got one, game, right. one, one game. One game. I'm, I'm going to try. Michael like Davis. we do this. Oh, we, Michael Davis, not Darius. So no, we, we do this show oh, and like a lot of fans, fans will be really excited that Staley's been fired and that you can start again and hire somewhere, someone new. I need a bit of time to process this because I still feel like Staley possessed a lot of the traits that would make for a good head coach. What they said on the call yesterday was Keenan, Mike, and Eckler play, played together for 8% of the snaps yeah. since Staley took over in 2021. What about stuff like strength and conditioning, the quality of your gym, the quality of your nutrition? So, like, everyone will be excited if the next hype... Yeah, you want to tackle in the preseason. Yeah, yeah, Should but I'm like talking that? more organisational stuff. I'm I'm not going to be convinced. I don't care who the hire is. Yeah, so neither do I. I'm not going to be excited about it, whoever it is, until I see, like you, it might be 12 months or 24 months, because what I want to see is 
top down change. Like I want to see different ownership ideally, but in, in the absence of that, at, at least clear evidence that we're seeing something new, it starts with firing Telesco. That's good. I agree. But yeah, I'm a bit burned by this whole experience because I thought Staley had the, the abilities to like drag this bad franchise up. And if he couldn't do it, I at least am a little dubious that someone else can necessarily do it. Now, maybe they can. Maybe it was all a Staley thing, but I think there are broader issues at bay that need to be fixed. What you worry is that the Harbour signing is made and within 12 months he spat the dummy and gone, this is not changing. All of a sudden, we're back here at this very time and Jim Harbour has quit. Quit. Mm. Because he can't. He just... They, and they, then that's a red then way. we are drinking four pillars, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, mix uh, nothing, just... And that's, but that's <laughs> straight in the beer bong. That's when Herbert goes, can I just go and back up my homes, please? Yeah. yeah. I'll, win, I'll, win, I'll win a championship like that. Tranquil was right. I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. It's... Uh, well, what, okay. So does that... Look, before we get into... And we're not going to get into names of candidates and stuff like that. But are you now... The two of you, are you off... Are you put off uh, hotshot coordinator 4.0 taking this over? There are options like... Guys like Ben Johnson, yeah. and Bobby Slowey. Depends who the GM is. Yep. yep. Great call. Depends okay. who the GM is. GM first. Yeah. Yeah. And then GM. we worry yes. about head coach. So, so like, where so where do you look for the where do you look for the the new GM? Successful organizations, I guess. Yeah. You're, you're trying to you're trying to you're trying to pinch a guy from somewhere else who's actually a proven so you're looking for an experienced GM as well from somewhere else. The thing is oh, and trying to get good, him across. But, but good who GM then, who then has to be okay with believing the words of the Spanos yeah. that they can actually do what they want to do rather than what they're told. But good, good GMs and good GM. And that's why, that's why Tom Telesco was hired as brand new GM because good candidates ask questions that they get the answer to and go, Oh, okay. It's one of these places. All right. And go, no, nah, I'm not interested. Yep. So if there's a experienced head coach hire or an experienced GM hire, that would be the first domino for me going, okay, maybe there is some organizational change here. But if it's a first time GM, then with an experienced head coach, I still worry. It's going to be a first time GM, unless you're going to go Thomas Dimitrov, the old Falcons guy. Like most GMs who get hired at first time GMs, there aren't a lot who get second goes for some reason. Unless you poach. Unless you poach. And then it's all about the fingers mean the taxes. The but, money, the or, but, but, if you, but if you go an experienced head coach like Harbour, <laughs> who, is, who is the GM? <laughs> who is the GM? Do you ever need a GM? So, what, so, so it's, it's, it's yes. going to be an interesting, it's going to be an interesting time to understand what the Spanos want. Yep. And I would like to hear a GM's philosophy because I still don't know what Tom Telesco's team building philosophy is. No. I, I don't like I people don't. ask him and he goes, Oh, we just, you know, this is what we want to do. It's, yeah. I, I don't believe it. I don't believe in windows. I don't believe in rookie windows. It's like mm. you're an idiot. Mm. If yeah. you don't believe in rookie windows, I don't know what you're doing mm. yeah. in any position. Yeah. Okay. To answer your sp- specific question. I don't think you should rule out first time head coaches just because it hasn't worked the last three times. I, I'm not, so, I would tend towards experience just for the reasons we've dis- discussed about maybe in this, cultural environment, organizational structure. You need someone who knows what they're doing. But I'd still like to cast the net wide through the interview process, especially depending on the GM hire. Like I, I do think the Shana, that Shanahan style of offense, McVay, LaFleur, McDaniel, Shanahan himself is a goer. So if Bobby Slowick areas, yeah. Bobby Slowick areas, or even Ben Johnson, who's like the mathematical computer science background guy, late 30s, done wonders with Jared Goff. And he was with Miami back with Joe Philbin in 2011. So he's had 12 years in the, in the NFL. But are we back to someone being a head coach who's calling the offense and is inexperienced as a head coach? That's so you don't even want you don't even want a head coach who's calling the offense. So that's going to be hardball. So but the guys who call the offense are McDaniel, McVay, Lafleur. They all manage it. I know so you don't. You want they've got, they've got, you want they've got good GMs. Right, right. Good GMs and organizations. I. For the cultural environment, that's what I said earlier, is that Harbaugh comes in and goes, I'm not calling the plays. I'm not calling the defense. I'm not calling special teams. You guys work for me. I'm a people manager. Yeah, yep. And I'm going to... He's got Greg Roman on offense, Fangio on defense. I'm, go- I'm just a psycho. I'm, no, I'm going to insulate my team. So I'm going to insulate my team because that's part of my role. From what's going on up here, I'm going to insulate them and I'm the conduit to what happens on the field. And the only way you can do that is to be an experienced operator. 
You, a first time head coach go, oh, I need to please everyone. I need to please everyone. You need to play the political game within an insight, within inside an organization. John Lynch, perfect example. Yeah. That's a really good, really good point. So it is, you know, all the names that are, you know, lists of one through 10 of guys who could be or would be head coach candidates. It's, I think it's a really good point that it is all relative to who the Spanos now install as the GM for those, those reasons. Because if you get a new guy who needs help, then you're looking at a Belichick style, Harbour style head coach GM kind of personnel as well as, you know, running the team. Would you like Belichick? No. You? Uh, not as much as I'd like. Would be you. Uh, not as much as I would like Harbour, but I'm. I still have my concerns. Mm-hmm. I have my concerns because the way that it has gone down for Belichick's career yeah. is. And look, we're going to have to call the equipment manager ahead and start putting some holes in hoodies before um before Darth Darth Belichick rocks up. Oh, uh, Joe uh, O'Brien as I see, or Josh McDaniels as I see, and. Um, I'm not going to lie. I find it really hard to show up for this show every week if it's Bill O'Brien or Josh McDaniels and Belichick as the system. But j- as just the like, I, I, I made. Fun and what of would be worse is if that breeds success. To be honest, you'd be like, no, oh, it's everything I hate. Bloody Milan. <laughs> <laughs> I listen. I, I made fun of the Peyton hiring as well. But look at what an experienced operator can do in an organization that was absolutely at sea. All of a sudden, mm. he's got a quarterback. Sorry, who, I missed that. Sean Payton. Payton. And I and, and I I will be the first one to admit I Especially made fun of it. Start. I made fun yeah. of it, and they and they oh, and they three, once yeah. they lost sixty to twenty. They got belted from pillar to post. Seventy. Seventy to twenty. They got belted. But yeah, you still have have given up the most points. Had, of had, the yeah, exactly. I had to make sure that you but knew it was yeah, more than last. But yet you got a guy who's he's a pe- he's obviously a people manager and knows how to do that. And as much as McVay also at the the Rams is a is a is an offensive genius and a very very smart man. He also he also gets people and. His personality, I think, is very uh, is very good in terms of empowering people. Um, Sean Payton, I think, is more of a sledgehammer. So it'll be interesting to see where it all goes. But the hirings will tell you something about the vision of the Spanner. Yep. Yeah, it sucks the Denver stuff because Payton wanted the Chargers job. He he banged the table about wanting to coach the Chargers. He was sitting at so We far. had Joe Lombardi mm-hmm. and the Chargers world wanted him out faster than a fly in the kitchen uh, and now he's going hey see man i'm not that a bad huh i'm not that a bad so it's it's just it is really it has been a perfect storm of thunderfuck <laughs> for the charges well, maybe that's our new podcast name <laughs> the, the thunderfuck down under i like that that's good <laughs> then people are really going to get confused with the thunder down under men's yeah, dancing troupe definitely. we're also getting further away with any kind of a real affiliation with the team the more we do that we are yeah, yeah exactly we are. yes we're like oh we've got to hang on to our real jobs this is not going anywhere no have we got anything further to add i think we've got as i said we've got three weeks guys to pontificate and discuss what it lies ahead mm. um i think it's kind of good that this has happened uh before the end of the year we at least yeah. get to see a little bit of on-field stuff um it sort of tests out gif and jojo i mean jojo's not going to do all that much as interim gm with three weeks to go he's not bringing in players or anything like that he's maybe he a <laughs> <laughs> oh maybe but it'd yeah, be yeah, super interesting to see how the team responds yeah and to see who's on the sideline and, and what the actual vibe of the team is on the sideline whether yeah. it's whether it's buoyant and happy yeah. or whether it's just Yep. As every year goes, there's always, I think there's always like a coach that loses their job as the year goes or during the season and how the team responds. You look at the Raiders, you look at last night where we've, we've got Brandon Staley versus uh, Antonio Antonio Pierce, Pierce, former linebacker, linebackers coach. Uh, And the minute that Josh McDaniels was thrown out, he came in, Devontae Adams, the whole team were like, yes. I want to. I want to. I want to do absolutely everything I can because this is a guy that I want to play with. And last night he coaches a, a five and eight. Or, uh, sorry, five and now six and eight team to sixty three points. Mm. Jeez. What's to say sorry. that next week we we face up against the Bills, who are backs against the wall, need to win this week. Quinn Johnson two hundred yards, five touchdowns, and we. <laughs> <laughs> we're playing Madden now. Yeah, we're playing Madden. Yeah. <laughs> 
on like amateur, yeah, on, on like blind, right. yeah, blind yeah. opposition. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and turn Josh Allen's down to zero. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not picks every time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but look, you know, crazy things could happen. Um, I said last week I, I never root for a loss and I stand by that. I don't. I don't think that we're capable of what with what we have. I don't know. Will, will Keenan come back? Does it matter? Maybe they'll just say, hey, Keenan, buddy, just go on ice, man. Get buddy, next year. like, look, yeah, you're having an all-pro year and maybe, maybe that's why he plays. Yeah, that's maybe. what he does. Yeah. So maybe. And it'd be nice to see Matt get 16, 17. Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. Nice. Absolutely. But you could see, you, you see the way that from last week to this week, teams are starting to scheme against Mac. Tooley, like you said, is getting tired and we've got bugger all. We're so thin. It's all the eggs in the basket paying marquee players stupidly big money um, because that's what all in is. Also, quick note, all in is just out the window. It's oh, gone all out. Yeah, it's all it's out. All out. It is yeah. literally toys out of the cot, baby yeah. out with the bathwater. Uh, gosh. Well, this has been fun. This has been really good. It's and like, isn't it good, good to, to have, have you Jack. back? I'm back. Isn't it good to have Jack back? back I mean, baby. I don't know what the few, you might still have a few more episodes off, but why don't you tell the listeners kind of what you've got going on in your plans? Uh, so currently in Melbourne, um, I jump on the boat in a couple of days time to move the car down to Hobart. And then by Christmas day, hopefully the studio will be set up and I've got a place to podcast. So uh, up until then, and I get to see my daughter who I haven't seen in a, in a couple of weeks, which would be lovely. Molly. Little Molly. Molly. Hello, and, and Beck. Um, but then I should be back on deck. You're only allowed to watch this when you're 18, Molly, because we are dirty mouth boys. <laughs> hey, man, die, die, you know, rubbish times call for potty mouth measures, I yeah, guess. I agree, I agree. Just... Um, but yeah, back, back, on, back on deck soon. And I know the, I know the deck, Yanks. Back on Twitter. Yeah, awesome. I know the Yanks. I know the Yanks hate cussing, but we're, we're pretty ruffians, us Australians, so. Uh, Lo- lovable convicts. Lovable. Yeah, we are convicts. <laughs> hey, I'm half English. We were the the, the cops, the, the persecutors. That's what you're host. <laughs> <laughs> you, it's you. Uh, mate, it's so good to have you back. Yeah, um, and I'm glad that we can do this and smile and laugh. And hopefully it is cathartic because, yeah. look, it has been... It's been a whirlwind of a three-year tenure that has now come to an end. And yeah, once again, to another Brandon. another to Brandon and his family. To Brandon yeah. and his family. Well, let's go. You less so. But you still, can't cheers with numbers. nothing is, is, in your but glass. That was synonymous of Brandon's tenure, wasn't it? Empty glass. <laughs> <laughs> Empty words, at least. Empty words. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, hopefully more fun, more pontificating. We'd love to hear your thoughts as well. So jump on Twitter. Um, Al will throw up some kind of fan mail stuff and you know we can just open the dialogue what do you guys think where did where did the, the team go from here we've got three weeks left in the season what do you want to see what do you want to see out of the playing group now and what do you want to see in the future what would you uh, like us to talk about exactly as well, like, because because you know just, I, I guarantee yeah. yeah we need some ideas <laughs> if we're playing the bills chiefs in denver Jeez. i ain't going to be spending much time talking about the game <laughs> strengths and weaknesses yeah <laughs> What happens this week, guys? What are the predictions? Because we can't we can't end without a, a result prediction. So, Chargers playing the Bills. Oh, gosh, how bad's it going to be? Uh, forty-two to seventeen. Oh, oh. Yeah, I'm going to say thirty-seven to eighteen. I'm going to go with one of those weird scores. One of those scoregamis. Scoregamis. That's what I was looking nice. for. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know how we score eighteen points. But there'll be a safety in there somewhere. Yeah. Someone will fucking kick a ball out of bounds and do some <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, look, I'm going to go 42 to 10. This is where the Chargers win. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm too, pr- I'm too proud. All right. Thanks for tuning in guys. We'll see you next week on the Thunder Down Under podcast. Yeah, Take it easy. Bye. <laughs>